Hi everyone, I'm Nathan Broman, and today I'm going to show you my first airplane of my own design, the Event Horizon. It's remote controlled and has first person view capabilities. The airplane is mostly made from corrugated plastic. It's heavier than foam board and harder to work with, especially to cut, but it's a lot more durable. The main feature of the Event Horizon is that it has forward swept wings instead of straight or rearward swept wings on most airplanes. Forward swept wings offer a number of advantages as opposed to rearward swept wings. One advantage is increased maneuverability because at high angles of attack, forward swept wings have a greater coefficient of lift than rearward swept wings do. Another advantage of forward swept wings is that they have a greater stall point than rearward swept wings do. This means that the airplane can tilt to a greater angle of attack before it stalls. For the wing, I selected a KFM-3 airfoil. It uses three steps of coroplast. This airfoil was easy to build with the coroplast as it doesn't involve folding the material over. The KFM-3 airfoil also provides more lift but also more strength as well since there are three layers. Strength is important with a forward swept wing because the wingtips have a tendency to bend up or down since oncoming air pushes them more out of position than back into position the way a rearward swept wing would. This concept is called aeroelasticity. The force of aeroelasticity will be greater when you're going faster because there's more drag force acting on the wing. This is the main reason that forward swept wings aren't more popular because if you go fast enough you can actually break the wing of the airplane. Fortunately, since this is a small remote control airplane, it doesn't go very fast, and the forces of aeroelasticity are less. The wing is strapped onto the fuselage with rubber bands, which hook onto metal axles that run through the coroplast. To stabilize the airplane in the pitch axis, I added large canards in the front. The event horizon has a static margin of about 10% which makes the airplane more stable in the pitch axis as well, but it also makes the airplane nose heavy. To compensate for that, I tilted the canards up slightly so they have a greater angle of attack and will produce more lift at the front of the airplane. The nose of the airplane can also be removed to access the battery. The battery I'm using is a 3-cell 1800 milliamp LiPo. I built the nose out of foam board since it requires more precise construction to fit snugly on the airplane. Another advantage of having a removable nose is that it can be swapped out in a crash. The nose would most likely take the brunt of the impact. It's designed to be able to blow apart and I can easily make a new one. For an FPV camera, I'm using the Mobius Action Cam. The Mobius camera has a video out port at the back so it can record and stream the FPV feed simultaneously. I've also mounted Mobius on a servo motor to pan the camera. I modified the servo to rotate 360 degrees, following Peter Schriefel's instructions on flight test. You don't want to rotate the camera too much though, because then the cable will get caught around the axle. The camera platform has been lowered a little bit to make the airplane a little more streamlined, but it also creates a small vent that air can flow through to cool the electronics of the airplane. A hatch on top of the airplane opens to reveal the electronics inside. I'm using the Immersion RC 5.8 GHz 600 milliwatt video transmitter and a Spectrum 6 channel receiver. You can also see the power cable from the battery to the speed controller running through there as well. For that, I'm just using some 16-gauge speaker wire. I also built my own cloverleaf antenna and added a plastic Easter egg to protect it. I'm using a 25-amp speed controller mounted at the back of the airplane. The motor is mounted in a pusher configuration on the back of the airplane. The motor I'm using is a Cheetah 2212-13 motor from BP Hobbies. I'm swinging a 9x6 APC prop. The two vertical stabilizers on either side form a sort of protective barrier around the propeller. The propeller is also mounted high enough that it doesn't actually hit the ground when the plane lands. The motor mount I'm using is made from PVC pipe that I torched with a heat gun so I could bend it into the proper shape. Two popsicle sticks on either side of the motor mount add extra support. There's a significant amount of down thrust in the motor mount 
because the thrust line is supposed to be pointed directly at the center of gravity of the airplane. The event horizon doesn't have a rudder, so instead I'm using elephants. The servo motors that drive the elephants are mounted on the underside of the wing. You can also see how I aligned the hinge for the elephants with the grain of the coroplast on the bottom layer of the wing. I also cut some reliefs into the elephant hinge to make it easier to bend so the servo doesn't use as much power. Now that I've explained the basics of the event horizon, let's go see how she flies. <laughs> The event horizon flew very well. It's a nice airplane for zipping around a small soccer field like this. It does seem a little bit sensitive to wind, but that might just be because it's a smaller airplane. A larger airplane wouldn't have as much trouble with that. I had no trouble with stalls. It performed very well in that sense. The motor seems to power it pretty well. It doesn't feel like it's underpowered. Well, thanks for watching, and see you next time.